it's usually gut dys- dysbiosis or imbalances of the bacteria to begin with. It's the fact that the nutrition has been really poor and they have multiple nutritional deficiencies. Mm-hmm. They live that really stressed out life. I, you know, and, and that stress you know, changes the gut microflora in such a way it makes you more susceptible to to, to candida. Welcome to the Doctor's Pharmacy. I'm Dr. Mark Hyman, and that's Pharmacy with an F, F-A-R-M-A-C-Y, a place for conversations that matter. And if you've ever heard of yeast issues or candida, or you think you might have some weird bloating after you eat, or something weird going on with you related to yeast or fungus, or maybe you have athlete's foot or vaginal itching or anal itching, this is the podcast for you because we're going to talk about what this is all about, what's true, what's not true, how to deal with it, and why it's such a problem with none other than my friend and colleague at the Ultra Wellness Center, Dr. George Papanikolaou, who's a rock star in his own right and has been just such a great contribution to the center here and has the second most popular <laughs> podcast uh, uh, of all my podcasts, which is pretty awesome. Um, I love that. <laughs> I love that too. <laughs> <laughs> he beat out everybody. Uh, yeah. and, and he's just a great guy. And I think we've been uh, really digging into some great issues here on the house call version of the doctor's pharmacy, which is a special episode dedicated to looking at some of the intractable conditions that people suffer from, and they're not getting answers about with traditional medicine. So we're going to talk today about all things yeast and fungus. So welcome, George. Uh, glad to be here, Mark. Okay, so what is the deal with fungus and yeast? You know, we've been hearing for years about Canada, and I got to go on the Canada diet and all this stuff. Is this true, or what's the deal? What's the deal? So Canada is, a, first off, it is a yeast, which is a, a type of mold, okay? It just happens to be the most common yeast to cause infection in humans. Yeah, like women get Canada right. infections uh, yeah. of their vaginal tract, which is the most common thing. Right? Yeah, yeah, you get, yeah. And, and, you know, we have other fungi, other fungi that cause athletes' feet and, you know, other, other types of skin infections. It's just like bacteria. There's lots of different fungi. There's not just yeah. like one thing like Canada. Yeah. Um, and Canada is a normal part of our gastrointestinal tract. And so it's not some foreigner. It lives naturally in our gastrointestinal tract. So that's a really fundamental thing to know. And it's part of the balanced ecosystem. Yeah. So, you know, as we talk, we're going to talk eventually about like, well, when it overgrows, we got to kill it, right? Well, you need, to, you need to rebalance it. You know, you don't want to completely destroy it because it is a part of the ecosystem. So it's a normal part of our ecosystem and it can be problematic. And in conventional medicine, it's very well accepted and understood in immunocompromised patients. 90,000 Americans per year have what we call candidiasis or systemic candida, meaning they, they, they have a blood infection because they're immunocompromised. Like you have AIDS, or if you're on immunosuppressive right. drugs, or you're on chemo drugs. Exactly. Or you've taken steroids. Or if you're diabetic, right, you tend to get more yeast issues. Yes, your you do. sugar's high because the sh- And so in those, cases, so in, in those cases, it's very well accepted. Where it becomes a problem is when people begin to, particularly practitioners, begin to listen to somebody's symptoms. I have a headache. I have brain fog. I have fatigue. I have thrush in my tongue. I have body aches. Um, I have menstrual irregularity. Um, uh, I have an itchy anus. Um, I have um, uh, joint pain, um, and I can't sleep, and my libido is low, right? Oh, it must be candida, right? right? And no, we, no, and and so it they might get, be, right? It, it might be, be but 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 now that person, you know, oh, you know, will go spit into a cup, and if you see strings, then it's candida, right? No, it's those are very nonspecific symptoms, and and that's not a very good test. But people who are desperate, who are really sick, and are looking for answers, right? Will will gravitate and will do that, and sometimes it works, but. We need to be really careful to know that they may be dealing with a totally different organism. Right. It may it might be another yeast or another yeah. mold, right? That needs to be treated a different way. Yeah. Uh, and so that's one thing. It could be, you know, you have general dysbiosis. You may have so something imbalance in your gut. Which is imbalance right. of the gut flora. You may have something called SIBO. Which is you know bacteria growing where it shouldn't. It in should the be small intestine. Up in the small intestine, um, and that needs to be treated differently. Uh, so we need to be really careful when we talk about 
candida, we just talk about yeast yeah. and mold as the cause of, of these of everything. It's not the cause of everything, no. but it's the cause of many things. Right. And, and, <laughs> and I, I think things. it's important to understand that because, you know, because we want, you know, all doctors should understand the importance of certain uh, maladies. And we don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Candida does exist. It can make people sick, but you have to understand how, when, and where. Yes. And have appropriate ways to evaluate and test. That's right. In functional medicine, it's what we focus on. It's how do we get to the root cause or causes? And in some patients, it might indeed be candida. In other patients, it might be other fungus. In other patients, the same symptoms might be caused by something entirely different. So, yeah. so let's talk about what are the common reasons we see fungal problems in our patients? Because they are really common. What are the common reasons we see this? Yeah, it, it, you know, I would say the biggest issue in our, in our world today is our nutrition. We have a huge amount of sugar, high fructose corn syrup, processed carbohydrates. Starch, flour, yeah, right? All of that, right? We have GMO, which alters the gut microbiome. All of these things cause an enormous shift. It shifts the bacterial uh, balance. So now organisms that are commensal, meaning that they live, they live in our gut. Um, They're normally there, but they th tend to like bloom if you feed them what they like to eat, right? Yeah, they bloom. And once you start feeding them um, and you, they bloom and you have E. coli is a normal part of your gut. But if you shift the ecology of your gut, you're going to get an enormous overgrowth of E. coli or a clostridium or a Klebsiella. Yeah. And now all of you have probably heard that you've had an infection. And I'm sure you've heard the term E. coli. I'm sure you've heard Klebsiella or clostridium, which causes C. difficile, mm. the diarrheal illness. Guess what? They all live in our gut. Yeah. And when our diet is really poor, they bloom. And the thing about sugar and flour, which is 60% of our diet is essentially refined carbohydrates, right? That stuff is jet fuel for the yeast in your gut and for the fungus. So you're fertilizing all that stuff yeah. and you're starving the good guys, which feed on what? They feed on phytochemicals like colorful fruits and vegetables and fiber and all the good stuff. So you're starving yeah. the good guys, you're feeding the bad guys, and that's when you start to get this imbalance or overgrowth. Yeah. There's actually a term for it now called CFO or small intestinal fungal overgrowth. Right, yeah, but it can it can cause a lot of systemic symptoms. So, yeah. how would you know that people might be at risk for it, and and how would you uh, look for the symptoms that give you clue that they might have a fungal issue? It's you know, I look at uh, Canada as a uh, sort of comes along for the ride, right? And sometimes it's going to be it's going to hijack the ship and become the main player. And sometimes it's going to be lurking there in the background and you're not going to realize it's creating a problem yeah. till you fix some other things or you can't fix those other things. Mm -hmm. So I suspect that most all the time I'm dealing with gut issues. Yeah. Uh, the kind of gut issues that we see when people come in with longstanding constipation, longstanding eczema, longstanding uh, um Yeast infections, recurrent, you know, vaginal yeast infections, uh, recurrent your UTIs, um, uh, athlete's foot that's recurrent, uh, uh, allergy, you know, as I said, allergies. I, I start to suspect there's inflammation Maybe going, there's on. going on, and then we know there's inflammation. We know we're going to find something in the gut, and can, you know, candida needs to be on that list. Yeah, you know, and I and I and I think you know, I go through. Like when I think about it, I go through what it, what are their risks, right? Have they been on antibiotics that oh, yeah. cause fungal issues? Yeah. Have they been on hormones like the yep. birth control pill? Have they taken steroid drugs, right? Have they eaten a diet that's t tons right. of those sugar? Are, those are the four big players. Yeah, right there. sugar yeah. and starch. Are they yeah. drinking a lot of wine and alcohol and beer? These are all things which promote the growth of the fungus. It's like feeding the bad guys. And then so I, if they're at risk for that, and then I go, wait a minute, what are their symptoms? And like like you mentioned, a lot of them, but. They can, they, can, they can be really common things that people just kind of think, oh, it's not a big deal. I got a fungal toe growth, yeah. or I have an athlete's foot, or I have vaginal itching and yeast issues. I have anal itching. I might have some eczema. I might have some psoriasis. I might have dandruff on my head. I crave carbohydrates. I crave carbohydrates. I, I can't lose weight. I can't lose weight. I should, I'm constipated, like you said. To begin to sort yeah. of create this whole thing. And I remember I had this one patient. She was like a walking mushroom. <laughs> she had like 
dandruff and eczema and anal itching and vaginal itching and she had athlete's foot. I mean, she pretty much had everything. Yeah. And she had these like tinea patches, which is another kind of skin, which yeah, is a well-known yeah, yeah. fungal infection yeah. called tinea versichlor, yeah. uh, which is common. And so she had all these issues and she was also feeling like crap. And people can get other issues from it. They can get depression, they can get fatigue, Absolutely, yeah. they can get brain fog, they can get uh, inflammation, they can get joint issues, they can get all these weird symptoms. So I'm always on the alert and 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 that's not to say that everybody who comes in has a fungal issue with these issues, but you 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 have to make sure you don't overlook it, and that's really what we focus on in functional medicine. Yeah, yeah, and we and and so when somebody comes in that sick, and that's and that's how we we see them. They they do come in that sick, and they come in you know almost despairing sometimes because they've been fighting these symptoms for years, and they're being treated with antihistamines, and they're being given topical steroids for their rash. And they're given PPIs for their heart and their acid blockers. Right. Acid blockers for um, their their heartburn or the regurgitation. Um, and they're they're taking uh, uh, some over the counter senna for their constipation. So they come in with these long list of pills to to combat every symptom that was put in its own silo, and nobody stopped to put together the fact that maybe these all belong together as as one problem. Hey everybody, it's Dr. Hyman. Thanks for tuning into The Doctor's Pharmacy. I hope you're loving this podcast. It's one of my favorite things to do and introducing you to all the experts that I know and I love and that I've learned so much from. And I wanna tell you about something else I'm doing, which is called Mark's Picks. It's my weekly newsletter. And in it, I share my favorite stuff from foods to supplements to gadgets to tools to enhance your health. It's all the cool stuff that I use and that my team uses to optimize and enhance our health. And I'd love you to sign up for the weekly newsletter. I'll only send it to you once a week on Fridays. Nothing else, I promise. And all you have to do is go to drhyman.com forward slash picks to sign up. That's drhyman.com forward slash picks, P-I-C-K-S, and sign up for the newsletter. And I'll share with you my favorite stuff that I use to enhance my health and get healthier and better and live younger longer. Now back to this week's episode. So, so we see this a lot, and and it's it, it, it we treat it usually in the context of everything else. So it's not mm -hmm. only often just the yeast, but it's their overall gut flora and their imbalances. Yeah. Um, but you you had a patient Julia who had all these issues, and she had a big yeast issue. Tell us about about her and what you found and what you did and how you helped her. Yeah. So you know Julia, you know sort of. Uh she represents what I, the symptoms that I was just talking about. She came in uh, with fatigue, brain fog, recurrent vaginal yeast infections, anxiety, carb craving, uh, inability to lose weight. Uh, she, um, let me uh, make sure I got it all. Oh, she had migraines as well. She was also under an enormous amount of stress. And I think it's important, and we're going to talk about that in the role stress plays with Candida, but um, she had enormous amount of stress which I, I came to find out came from some childhood trauma that was significant. Um, what her recent stress was a divorce um, that had just drawn out over four years. It was really difficult. There was a custody battle. And mm. it was during this period of time that all these symptoms really worsened. And she was not getting any relief from the multiple doctors she's been seeing. And so she arrived here. Her, 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 her symptoms were really at this point like anxiety and bloating and constipation. Secondarily, she was talking about, I also have had this longstanding uh, uh, rash, it comes and it goes, and I get migraines. So, of course, I do a, a gut microbiome test, um, and I'm already, because of her symptoms, I, I was already thinking that, yeah, this is definitely a gut issue, but the, the, the yeast vaginitis, the recurrent rash, the bloating, um, I was definitely thinking she had a, a dysbiosis or imbalance. But I did suspect that she might have candida because of the carb craving uh, and the bloating and mm -hmm. the rectal itch. So it was there. So I did some, I did an additional test. I did candida antibodies. So I, I, Candida can be hard to find. Yeah. And, I, and I, I really like to have something to hold on to yeah. when I make the diagnosis, something that is real. So here are the places I look. I did the candida antibodies. Um, the, the complete diagnostic uh, stool test that I did is going to measure, is going to actually look for candida using PCR testing. 
Uh, and it's uh, then the other place I look. And these are tests you just don't get at your regular you doctor. Do you not. So what we no. do at the Ultra Wellness Center yeah. is we look at things like antibodies to different foods, right. antibodies to yeast. We look at right. the stool test. And then I, I also, you can also look at what we talked about um, uh, earlier um, was the organics acid test. The organics acid test can actually look for metabolites of um, gut bacteria in your urine. Or fungus. Or fungus. Or fungus. And one of those metabolites that Candida makes and makes alone is d arubinitol And so I checked for d arubinitol on our organics acid test, and that was enormously off elevated. The chart, yeah. Off the chart. And so that was the, that's all I needed to know, understand so, that so, she had candida. So what you're saying is basically there's, there's tests that you can do where you can see if it's growing in the stool, whether there's uh, the genetics of it in the stool, whether there's actually indicators in your blood from antibodies, but also you can look in your urine to see that yeah. these, these metabolites of fungus or even bacteria can be absorbed from your gut and then they end up in your urine. So they're not human metabolites. So if you right. see this thing in your urine, it's not coming from right. you. Right. It's coming from that critter in your gut. Yeah. And that can be an issue. So we use basically the history, yep. which is really important. All the Absolutely. symptoms we talked about, we have thrush or you have a white-coated tongue or all these things. I just have to emphasize one thing. Everybody gets a, everybody gets a really, really, really deep history and a physical exam, yeah. right? And I, you know what? And it's out of that that I cognate and I begin to put the pieces together. The narrative comes together and it can't come together unless you do those two yeah, things. Yeah, it's really right? the story. And the and, tests confirm it. And then the tests confirm yeah. where I was going and you know what I was thinking. And in this case, if the test didn't come back positive, right, then I, I wouldn't have, I, you know, maybe she didn't have candida. But right. I will say the final thing is that on, on, on how do you, you make that final decision they have candida, or yeast, your fungus. Or yeast, or yeast, can, you can eat a fungus. As an yeah, umbrella I, I, term I agree. for fungus. I think yeah. it's, it's not just yeah, candida. Yeah, it's it not candida. Other... It's the most common, but yeah. it's it's uh, we can use the term yeast or uh, fungus. I I may I may say you know what I know the test came back negative. I, I know how hard it is to find, but clinically, I think this person yeah. has fungus. I'm going to treat. Absolutely. It. I mean, some right. of the walk in mushroom. They have a white coating on their tongue and vaginal yeast right. infections and itching in their anus, and they have eczema and they have blepharitis, which is crusting around the eyes, and they have itchy ear. I mean, like there's a million symptoms that are from overgrowth of fungus or yeast. And even if their tests are normal, you still have to treat them. Yeah. Yeah. And what's amazing is these people really get better. They, they get oh, better. It's like one of those oh, miracle things in functional is, medicine. When you get it right, yeah. it is, you know, and, and, I, and, and that's why it's really important because it's maybe 10% of the people that come in have a, a fungal origin for their symptoms uh and, and and i will tell you most of the time it's just not that it's it's usually just not that it's it, it's usually gut dys dysbiosis or imbalances of the bacteria to begin with it's the fact that their nutrition has been really poor and they have multiple nutritional deficiencies mm -hmm. they live that really stressed out life i you know and and that stress you know, changes the gut microflora in such a way it makes you more susceptible to to, for, to candida. Absolutely, and I think you know. Let's get into what we do for these patients because you know we talk about you know the kinds of symptoms that people have, the kind of testing we do. That's a little bit different here at the Ultra Wellness Center, but but this is not a hard problem to fix uh, if you deal with the causes, right? Yeah. If you if you know what you're doing, so tell us how do you approach these people through diet and the right supplements and maybe medications? What do you do? Yeah, so yeah, so those are the things that I look at. So again, I look at the general lifestyle and I start to think about, you know, where what's going to work. And I, I it's going to be all the lifestyle issues. So it's going to be nutrition. It's going to be sleep. It's going to be exercise. It's going to be stress reduction. Those are those are right at the top those of the table. Those are key for anybody. Key for anybody. So nutrition becomes a, a key place. So when I think about candida, I think about changing their diet. Uh, I think about treating it. Uh, what do you do to the diet? So the diet. So the diet we want to take out, you know, sugars, processed carbohydrates. We want to take out, because uh, those are the things that feed your candida. Yes. And so there's some specific so stop diet. Stop feeding them. Yeah, yeah, ah, stop feeding them. Starve so, them. So we're getting rid of like all the processed foods, all the sugar. We're going to limit alcohol and reduce stress. Those are my top four things yeah. I do. Yeah. Okay. That, and you that, don't have to go on this super extreme anti-candida no. diets that everybody talks well, about. Well, they're dangerous. I mean, they're, they're not that they're dangerous, but you know, if you think about the anti-candida diet, it restricts too many sugars, right? And and the same thing with the, there's a diet called the GAPS diet. Yeah. There's a diet called the SCD diet and the anti-candida diet. One thing they have all in common 
is they're very restrictive of carbohydrates, yeah. almost to a fault, to the point where you might go into ketoacidosis or ketosis. You wouldn't go into ketoacidosis. Well, you know, I'm di- sorry. I'm sorry. Diabetic. I mean ketosis. I mean yeah. ketosis. You may go into which ketosis. isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's not. However, there is there you know there there are some some studies that have shown that the anti the antifungals we use both um, uh, the pharmaceuticals and the um, herbs. herbs that we use. Um, do not work as well in a fasted state. Interesting. And also, neutrophils don't function as well, and neutrophils are very important in fighting the um, the candida and keep it from adhering to the 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 uh, intestinal wall. Those are your white blood cells, right. right? And so, so those diets, you know, that's one of the, you know, there's some research that points to them doing that. So that I'm I'm a little cautious about wanting to use such strict. Yeah, um, but just getting rid of the reduction. sugar, the starch, and so, processed carbs. So and that's junk what we food. do. So what we do basically here is we. And you probably don't want to eat any blue cheese, right? Right. So <laughs> we do those things. We get rid of the processed carbohydrates. We we get we get rid of the starchy carbohydrates. We get rid of the sugars. We limit the alcohol. Reduce the stress. And you know. There's so we do something a little bit like a low FODMAP diet. So we reduce those those foods that are easily fermentable. Uh, it's like onions and uh, gar- uh, onions and uh, asparagus and uh, wheat um, would be examples of some of those foods you want to restrict. So now that's a great place to start because good nutrition is good for everything. But generally, we find. I find in my patients that's it's not usually not enough. Yeah. Candida is yeah. hard to treat, and we need to then treat it. And typically, we'll you need st- a weed killer. <laughs> you need a weed killer. Yeah, you, you really do. And what do um, you use? Uh, so I'll typically start with um, a- a- herbals. You know, so there's caprylic acid, there's a uh, uncinilic, uh, un- undicilic acid, there is uh, lauricetic acid, uh, lauric acid. Um, Which is in breast milk and coconut, yeah, right? Yeah, breast milk and coconuts. Um, and then two uh, uh, spices that are very potent, um, and I think you need to be careful when you use them, are uh, oregano and thyme. Yes. And and they can be very, very helpful. Um, berberine, yeah, oregano is a great yeah, antifungal. Berberine, berberine can also be effective, and berberine also is an antibacterial, so it can be used to treat uh, a bacterial overgrowth as well as a fungal overgrowth. So I will generally start there. Mm-hmm. I'll also add in some biofilm busters because these candida, like other bacteria, they will congregate together. They will form a little town. They'll they'll put up their umbrellas and be invisible to the immune system. So and what it, is a biofilm buster? So what biofilm is a biofilm buster? What is biofilm? Is, so biofilm is that. It's when they gather in a, in a, it's like a big village of these candida. They throw up their umbrellas. So it's like so, a protective right, tent over them. Tent over them. So they, they're invisible to your immune system. And they they're pr- protect themselves against the antibacterial that you're going to use or the antifungal that you're going to use. Mm. So, so biofilms. When I have a patient, it's not getting any better. I'm going to pull out the bio. I'm going to pull out the biofilm busters, and those are going to be things like uh, serapeptidase, nanokinase, um, and uh, uh, there's one more that I use. Um, that's slipping my mind right now. That's okay. So we've got we've got the antifungal herbs. We've yep. got biofilm busters. And when do you decide to use medication, and what do you use? So when we when that's not working, then we oftentimes do have to go to medication. So I'll use Diflucan, Nystatin. Um, Nystatin is sort of like the Zyfaxman. If people have heard of SIBO, Zyfaxman is an antibiotic that's not systemically absorbed. It just stays in the gut. Okay, you give Nystatin to babies. Yeah, yeah. And, you give, and yeah, pregnant yeah. women, babies can use Nystatin. And so Nystatin is a good choice if you're concerned about a patient's sensitivity to medications. Um, so Nystatin might be one of my starting points. The most effective treatment I use is Diflucan. Yeah. Now, Diflucan is one of those drugs that we hear is bad and bad for your liver. Doctors freak out about it. They don't want to take it for more than a day. But, you know, the old fungal drugs were dangerous. What we used to learn about this in medical school was a drug called amphotericin. We call it amphoterable because it had all these side effects. But these newer drugs don't, especially if you're not taking a lot of other medications or there's yeah. drug interactions. And, and I prescribe probably more Diflucan than any other drug I've ever prescribed in my entire medical career. And knock wood, I really had no problems with it. People do yeah. get die off where they can feel like the, the yeast gets killed and then they'll get an immune response to that and they can feel kind of like fluey yeah. for a little bit. But that you can kind of cut out with getting charcoal afterwards a few hours later. And I think that this is really an, a, a very effective treatment. 
for people who really need it. And oh, I think absolutely. I wouldn't be afraid of using it. And it's used for more than just a day. We use it for a few weeks or sometimes even a month. Yeah, this, look, look, you know, can, you know, candida is one of those controversial areas in conventional medicine. But in functional medicine, you're going to come across people who have fungal infection, or have yeast infection, and it's having an enormous impact on their life. And you've got to be really cognizant of that. You need to test for it, and then you need to treat it appropriately. It is not that easy to get rid of. It can yeah. recur. <clears throat> yeah. And so we have to be really diligent in helping our patients not just get rid of the candida, but rebalance their nutrition, rebalance all of their lives, because it's those things that led to the candidal infection in the first that's place. Right, right. So that's a big part of what I do is when I'm treating that, they're happy to feel better. They're glad that we figured it out, but that change in diet needs to stay that way. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you go back to eating all the starch and sugar, right. you're going to just get a problem again. Yeah, and so um, I think it's really important. It's, a, it's, a, it's an important topic. It was important enough for me to want to talk about it because I see it enough and see the impact it has and, and, and how wonderfully people can do. We're one of the places I see it most often, and I, I, I see some of the most dramatic turnarounds, is in our, our, our autistic kids. Yes, I was just thinking about that. You know, so autistic kids, one of the hallmarks of autism uh, or, or part of their complex is, you know, gastrointestinal issues, you know, bloating, distension, diarrhea. Uh, that is like one of the biggest things that an autistic kid will struggle with. Uh, and and it, it goes ignored by their primary care and their pediatrician. Or their psychiatrist. I mean, 95% of these kids have gut issues. How is it not relevant? And and how is the brain connected, not connected? So we do the testing and we, we you know, we find that they they have, a, their, you know, a D-arribinitol like off the charts. Yeah. And so- That's that urine marker for that's yeast. That's a urine marker for yeast. And and sometimes they have nothing that shows yeast, but they're they're testing for uh, their their they their gut their, their complete diagnostic stool evaluation comes back. They have a huge imbalance in their gut bacteria, uh, and so we're going to treat that. And those kids, if they're not getting better when I'm trying to fix their gut, and I don't have positive testing for candida, but I have all the others, you know, I have other symptoms. I put I put that kid on Diflucan. And I can't tell you how many kids have had, you know, amazing break breakthroughs on their Diflucan. It is. It's amazing when you hit it right, and it's the right patient and the right condition. It can be one of those miracle treatments. Yeah. So I, I, I think you know this is an incredible conversation about a very common condition that's often ignored, or actually almost completely ignored by traditional doctors. It's one of those hot button issues that they freak right. out about and think you're a quack if you're talking about it. And I think there's been an overemphasis on candida, but I think this in general, people who, who have this collection of symptoms by history, who have the right tests, when you hit it right, these people really get better. You cut out the starch and sugar, you use the herbal protocols, you sometimes use the medication in combination with an overall treatment of their health. And it's amazing how people yeah. get better. And that's what we do here at the Ultra Wellness Center. It's what you do, George, and what we've been doing for decades. And I think... Uh, for people who struggle out there and are not getting the answers to their health issues, we're, we're here for you at the Ultra yeah. Wellness Center. And we see people from all over the world. We have all virtual consults now if you want. And I'm going to come here. We can do great video consultations and telemedicine. Which has been great. Every, everybody loves them. Yeah, people love them. And, and uh, we can do all the diagnostics we need. We figure out how to do that. And just go to ultrawellnesscenter.com to learn more. And we'd love to see you. Uh, if you're struggling and you can't figure out how to get better yourself, maybe just cut out the starch and sugar and take some probiotics. Uh, there's a lot of other things we didn't talk about, but this is, is really a, a an important topic for people yeah. to understand that there are ways to get better from things that are struggle street for them that that aren't getting answers through traditional care. Uh, so hopefully we'll see you at the Ultra Wellness Center. Um, um, thanks for joining us for this podcast, a special episode of House Call. Thank you, George. Thank you, Mark. It's always a pleasure. And if you love this podcast, please share it with your friends and family on social media. Tell us how you might think you have an issue with geese. We'd love to hear and leave a comment. And uh, subscribe wherever you are your podcasts. And we'll see you next time on The Doctor's Pharmacy. 